Merrick uh, is an interesting man. Not only has Merrick uh, been involved with... I've heard that said before, but maybe not yeah, in this context. Not only has Merrick been involved with teaching computer science for over 30 years, he has founded several successful startups, uh, including Dumbala, which is uh, actually where uh, Hypopotamus' house is where Dumbala was, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, in, but in 2001, you founded Flashpoint at Georgia Tech, and it's not a startup accelerator. 2001? No, I'm sorry, 2011. Flashpoint is based on a concept of startup engineering, but really one of the things that y you require out of your, uh, the companies that come through Flashpoint is uh, to be connected to reality. And so I, I want to start off with what, what do you mean by um, reality? Are you sure you want to know the answer to that question? <laughs> please, please. <laughs> yeah, my, my friends who know what I'm going to talk about say don't go there. So it, it's very hard to see the way the world is. It's very, you don't even notice that you don't see the way the world is. In fact, you take it for granted that you see the way the world is. You, you all know that, you know, Scott, you, you've got a, a, a blind spot. In fact, you've got a couple of blind spots because of the way your retina is built. But of course, your brain fills in the blind spot. It feels complete. The world is like that, actually, in a much more complicated way. We're walking around with these little theories that we have in our heads about how the world works. But the world is just way more complicated, way more detailed. And we don't notice that the world is not actually the way we think it is, according to our little theories. The way we get disconnected from reality is we, build, we think the world works the way our theories are. We build to the way that they work in our theories. And then we're disappointed or we're surprised when it turns out that it's much more complicated than that. And our things fit our theories, but they don't fit the world. And so uh, you, you like to um, refer to a kind of a, a film analogy between well, how people view startups and their, what's that delusion that's in their mind versus what the reality of what startups are. What, what is that? Yeah, so that's actually for the first time we tried it today. So uh, there's this Ayn Rand image that you can get from looking at uh, Rourke, the great architect from the Fountainhead. And who thinks of himself as uh, a maker, someone who can actually see what the world is like, decide how the world is going to be, pull together the resources, and by sheer force of will in the face of any obstacle, pull together something that will be successful. That's how people go about startups historically. In fact, that's how I think most of us go about our lives. But that's not actually how startups really go. Startups really go more like the movie Inception, which I guess makes more sense if you've seen it. But in Inception, you also have a, a, a person, Leonardo DiCaprio, who's very charismatic outside of the movie and in the movie even more, who has a vision of what's possible. Has, and actually, he has the capacity to pull together a team that can construct almost any reality that he thinks he can construct. And his job is to construct a reality that fools a customer because he believes that a customer has a certain desire, and they do. And the problem is that startups also have this capacity to build any world that they want to build. And they imagine that the world that they're going to build is a world that, in which they and their customers are going to achieve value. The problem is that's an illusion. That is an illusion, the, the illusion is, and it's a complete illusion, that the world of the future that you and your customers both agree on is a better world to be in. And here's how that doesn't play out. You build to that world, you actually come up and you actually construct the construct that you and your customers agreed that you would construct, and you want to sell it and they don't want to buy it because it doesn't actually bring to them the value that they thought it would. That's one way that, that startups fail. And so, um, I guess, what, one of the first things, the first time we talked, uh, one of the things that it struck me was, you're, you've built startups with success. Uh, and you, and yeah, I wish I had known some of these things back when I could have saved us all a lot of money and time. <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that's what I'm getting at. I mean, um, is, is, is this really uh, about uh, being conscious of your incompetence? <laughs> Are you telling me I'm incompetent? <laughs> that, was, that was a very indirect way of saying yeah, I, would, I would say, you know, you certainly get to a point where you realize that what you know, you know really well, and you know just how little that actually is of all that there is to know. Uh, well, uh, so the, uh, the startup I can point to that's uh, most built along these principles is Flashpoint. And what Flashpoint is, is a kind of a minimal instantiation in the world of something which, you know, I can look around, it, look around, it's creating demand. And the demand came even before it actually existed. In fact, if you, uh, you know, people ask me, you know, why did you do this? Why did you do that? And the answer is always, 
Um, none of what Flashpoint is is actually a construct that I had before Flashpoint existed. All of what Flashpoint is is a reaction to discovering where the white space was in the world and building the smallest thing that I had to build because I couldn't avoid building it. And it's kind of remarkable when you take that attitude on, on the world. I mean, people have said in the past, I forget, maybe it was Drucker who said, that a good definition of business is it's a solution to a problem. But then that means you have to understand what the problem is. And if you can really understand the problem, if you can really palpate it, it turns out that the actual process of figuring out the problem is equivalent to the process of building the product. You're, uh, for those who have gone through Flashpoint and those who've witnessed Flashpoint, uh, you're very um, infamous, I will say, for being um, pointed with your, your feedback uh, and, and really um, wanting to drive the delusions that are in, in these startup uh, f founders' heads out of their head. So what is that, what do you look for? Why, why, what, what is that process as you're listening to these startups go through your, uh, this, this flashpoint, what are those weak points and those pain points you're trying to go after? Yeah, and just, just you know, I'm not being pointed um, to cause any pain. It, it's, although, you know, it is, uh, it is true. The first batch of flashpoint, we had uh, founders cry. They would stand up and they would explain where they were. They would explain their assumptions about the world. They wouldn't even realize they were explaining an assumption about the world. They would basically describe how they saw the world and what they were working on. And a series of questions later, which I was just being legitimate and genuine with them about trying to understand how they were thinking about it, they would cry. And then someone actually stopped me after one of those and said to me, you can't make people cry, Merrick. And, you know, at first I was uh, quite... I was worried about it. I mean, I, that wasn't my goal, to make people cry. That was the opposite. It's make them successful. And then I thought about it more, and I, I think a friend uh, suggested to me, you know, actually what actually just happened there was you took someone who had all of their hopes and dreams wrapped up into something which wasn't true, and they saw it. And in that moment, that is an, you want that to be an emotional moment. So what people experience is point that I'm experiencing as just trying to be clarifying. Now, frankly, uh, who wants to have their lives so clear? Well, I think it matters. What I've, what I've discovered is that in a setting where there's so much uncertainty and there's so little resource available to recover from mistakes, that clarity and accuracy and the reduction of ambiguity and the increasing uh, attention to where there are uncertainties, if you can help people do that, it increases their chance of success that increases the efficiency with which they can reach success, and the success could be much larger. So I'm kind of relentless about it. What we found at Flashpoint is, is the following. It requires a mindset change to be able to act like a kind of founder who's really successful. That mindset change is not so easy to accomplish. In order to accomplish it, you have to have a set of principles, you have to have a touchstone to the ground truth, and you have to have practices, and you have to have someone like me hitting you upside the head every so often to remind you, and by the way, I wish I had someone hitting me upside the head because these illusions, we all have them. No one's immune to them. Even when you see them, you can't, I, I find myself in this situation regularly where I think, I can't, you know, three weeks ago I thought something and I can't believe that I was, uh, it was the same stupid thing I tell everybody else that they're making mistakes, that you can't see it in yourself. Interesting. Thank you for your time. Eric first, Flashpoint. Thanks, God, it was great.